All right, guys, this is Chris back with another video for you on your MPC 3000. And today we're going to be talking about using SCSI devices with the Velixi operating system. If you're not familiar with the Velixi OS, it was an OS update that was released by Rohan Mansell back in 2007. And he had taken 3.11 and introduced some, some new features, one of which was a chop function. I've already done a video on that. If you haven't seen it, please go over and take a look. But he also included some really great features for using SCSI devices and that's what we're going to talk about today so let's take a look at the compact flash drive I'm using and then we'll come back and navigate through some of the menus and format a card and and go through some of the features that the OS offers okay so here we have my compact flash drive installed in my my machine and you can see that I have an external zip drive hooked up to the rear SCSI port and as you guys know there's many different um, compact flash drives that people have used in the 3000 but this one here in my opinion is the best as you can see it has two slots the machine will access both of those cards so the top one is going to be SCSI ID 0 and the bottom one is going to be SCSI ID 1 and you can bounce back and forth or copy from card to card with this device so like I said it is a true hot swap you can switch cards out with the power on there's no extra steps required it works it works really, really well. I'm really happy with this device. So this is a compact flash kit that I'm actually selling right now. People have been buying for me and are really happy with it. So what we're going to do is we'll go into the disk menu and I'm going to show you how to format a card. And um, we're going to we're going to do some things. We're going to take advantage of some of the options that the Velixi operating system offers with this compact flash and uh, SCSI device. Okay, so let's take a look at our disk menu and we're going to go through and format a card. Okay. Disk, option 9, copy, format, other, and we're going to go to option 4, format a SCSI hard disk. I'll come back to some of these other options here in a little bit. Okay, all right, so we're going to select our hard disk that we want to format, and as I said before, my upper compact flash card is 0, my lower one is 1, and my external zip drive is going to be 5. So let's go ahead and format that upper card. You get three options here, hard, soft, and partition. Avoid hard and soft, they don't work. I've tried it a number of times and I ended up shutting the machine off uh, because it's like it never formatted. So just go to partition. That's going to give you a couple options. You have uh, mode zero is MP3, MPC 3000 standard partition. And that's about 26 partitions at 30 megabytes each. The MacBook will recognize that card if you put it in a, a USB compact flash reader, but it's only going to see the first partition. A PC won't see it at all. If you go into mode one, hybrid partition that's designed so the 3000 can read it and a computer can also read it the only downside to that is a macbook will see all the partitions it'll see all 26 a pc is only going to see the first one so if you're working at a excuse me if you're working with a uh, a pc you had a disadvantage in that regard so let's choose mode one and you see you have several options here and uh one of the features of Elixir is that you can now format at 32 megabytes each. Like I said, 3,000 standard will only let you do about 30. So now, if you max your RAM out at 32 megabytes and you actually fill that RAM up, let's say you take, you record a sample and use all 32 megabytes, you could store that on one partition, okay? And you could access that without having to split it up or chop anything off. So that's what I usually use, 26 at 32. Okay, once you hit option four, it's going to take a few minutes or a few seconds rather to format it's partitioning the disk now okay now that that's had been formatted I could actually take this card out and I can put it in my MacBook and my MacBook will see all 26 partitions and we're gonna do that in a little bit we're gonna load some sounds in there and we're gonna put them in the MP so let's uh let's talk about copying from SCSI device to SCSI device so if you go disk, we're already in the disk menu, option nine, you see option two has co copy a SCSI hard disk, okay? So typically, most of you guys have probably used a zip drive at some point if you've been on the 3000 for a while. And as you know, these drives are failing and people are losing their work. So this is a real nice feature that it works. It takes a long time um, and, and it kind of, it's, it's a nice feature that could have been a great feature. Um, unless I'm understanding it wrong, but your source, your source, let's say your source is going to be your zip drive. So we're going to make that SCSI ID 5 and our target is going to be that card we just formatted. So we'll change it to zero. If I hit do it, this will take about 
two hours. I have a 100 meg zip disk in there, and it'll take about two hours to transfer it to that compact flash card. The problem with that is when it formats, when it transfers all that information, it formats my my compact flash disk down to the same as that zip disk. So if it's a 100 meg zip, it's going to make my card 100 megs, and I lose the rest of the storage capability. So it's it's better in a lot of ways to actually just load the program or, or load your your sounds manually one at a time and then copy it's much faster and um, and of course you get the full capacity of the card so like I said this does work it just takes a really long time and it seems like you lose the full capacity of the card so with that being said let's go ahead and um, let's load some sounds so because I have three different devices we have to select which one we want to load from and uh, we do that by going copy format other and make a SCSI hard disk active and we'll just go down the list you can see right now I have SCSI ID 0 in use which has just been formatted so there's nothing in the card multi-sector transfer mode that was created I believe to allow the 3000 to recognize and work with with additional uh, compact flash or SCSI devices and um, most of the time what that does is it throws an error so in most cases you just you're better off having it off um, SCSI disk to make active is zero now if I want to make my zip disk active we'll take we'll change that to five make active that just kicked on SCSI bus reset if I were to attempt to make um, SCSI ID 1 active and I didn't have a card in there it would eventually time out and say you know there's no no device and that just resets so I can search again by you know once I insert the card and then of course the timeout is the amount of time that it's willing to look for a SCSI device so now that I have my zip disk active let's go ahead and load a program okay so we'll go to R8 program load and you see I have two options here load it and control and load it this is also new to Velixi uh, if I had a previous program loaded what it would do is it would wipe that memory and then it would load this up so if I hit control and load it would do that I don't have anything in the machine now so I don't need to do that but um, but you know had you been working and doing you know working working on a previous program um, you can of course delete that and load something new so let's go load it this is going to take a little bit Okay, now that we got our program loaded, let's go ahead and make SCSI Disk 0 active. Disk option 9, option 5. Let's make 0 active. Okay, and let's go save a program. Disk, save to disk a program 4. There's that R8. We're going to do it. Okay, and it's saving everything now to my compact flash. So that's the way, that's the way I recommend transferring your files. Like I said, you could try the other way, see if it works for you, but just see how fast that just worked out, okay? All right, um, next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to put this card in a MacBook, drag and drop some files, and then load them into the NPC so you can see how that works, and then I think that'll, that'll, that'll be all. That'll do it for us. So, um, all right, give me a second. I'll get right back to you. All right, so I got my card plugged into a MacBook, and I'm using this USB compact flash device. These cost like five bucks on eBay, maybe less than that if it comes from China. But either way, I plug the, I put the card into the device, and as you can see, the the MacBook recognizes A through Z. So I'm in I'm in partition A right now, and those are all the sounds from that program that I saved to that partition. You could actually see it says R8 program, and and you could take this, you can make a folder and save it onto your Mac. One thing I do want to mention. The 3000 will not read folders. So if you start putting folders in these partitions and start dragging and dropping sounds, when you put that card in the MP, the MP is not going to recognize those folders. It can't see that. They have to be individual sounds. So what I want to do right now is I want to, uh, I've got some drum sounds here that are already SND. And uh, what I like to do is just drag and drop those and put them into partition B right here okay and now we could put this card back in the MPC and we could load those sounds up um, 
These are SND files. The 3000 will only read SND. If you have WAV files and you want to do this, you need a program to convert from WAV to SND. One of the programs that a lot of people have used is RS16X. It's approximately $39, I think. There's another program out there that is called MPC Program Maker. I'm not familiar with it. I haven't used it. I have heard some people have had success. But um, if you want to drag and drop and put files from the, from the Mac into the MPC 3000, you do need to realize that the 3000 will not resample. So it's not going to take on the characteristics of recording an analog signal from a turntable or from another form of audio and uh you know it's it's not going to really have that traditional 3000 sound so it might not sound bad but you know it might just sound a little digital so um it's something you need to experiment with but let's go ahead and eject this card and put it in a 3000 load these sounds up and i think that'll do it for us okay so i got my card back in the drive let's load up some of these sounds let's go disc option seven okay it defaults to partition a let's change that partition b select it all right, okay, so there's the snare load. Snare two. I'll just load up three of these, assign them to pads, and you can see. So these are these are WAV files converted to SND. Of course, I put them on the card. Now I'm putting the card back in the machine. Let's go program sounds option one. Okay, pad one. Okay, and there it is. We got our Okay, we got our sounds off the computer onto the compact flash card. Now, now you can go back and forth. You can save your work to the card. You can back it up on the computer. There's a lot of things you could do. Uh, one of the things that I do want to mention is that um, I stick to one gig cards. The reason being is that the 3000 is only going to use, I think in this case, 830 megabytes, right? Um, so you could have a 2 gig or a 4 gig or a 10 gig card. It's only going to use 800 megabytes of that card. So you're you're not really utilizing that storage space. Um, and then, you know, I don't know if it's going to cause problems or not. Some guys have had complaints about, you know, certain cards not working. This compact flash device that I'm using works really well. Uh, it, it'll take any card. It's not picky about cards. Some of them out there are. So it's just best to avoid any problems. It's best to stick to a 1 gig card and... Um, you know that way you won't really run into any problems but um like i said you know this this really works well it opens up a lot of opportunities for the machine and kind of brings the machine into um you know it brings it up to date a little bit so if anyone has any questions please comment and um or you can always get in touch with me candidate npc sales at gmail.com and uh if you need anything please let me know i do service repairs i sell upgrades if uh, if you like the screen that uh, you've been looking at this whole video, this is my product. I sell it on eBay. Of course, I sell it th direct. You can contact me or follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Canimate underscore NPC. And, um, you know, I hope some guys found this useful. So um, let me know how you like it. Give it a thumbs up and please share. Thanks a lot.